Welcome to this Match 3DX video tutorial. In the previous videos we explained how to run Match 3DX with the SGM 2.5D process and now we want to take a look at the output. We finished the processing in Match 3DX Commander and so I close the 3DX Commander and I will take a look at the output folder. When we take a look at the output folder, we see different files. I want to here just show them here in a general presentation. So we have the general output folder that we defined in uh, Match3DX and then we will get here our log file and the point cloud as last files and also some structuring files which we will then use in DT Master Viewer which is part of Match3DX which you can use together. Additionally we have a subfolder point cloud where we have temporary files for the whole process. We will also take there a short look and for us also important the true auto photos which are stored uh, tile wise we will see this in the DT Master Viewer. Uh, for each tile we have a subfolder where they are stored as um, TIFF files with TFW georeferencing files. So let's take a look here at the result itself. We can open in the capture the DT Master Viewer which is always part of Match3DX and then we can see um, um, interactive tool that allows us to access the data. I will only here mainly focus to navigate to it and to take a look. A uh, more in detail video about this would be nice. I'm not sure when we will do this but this is really now just to access the data and to have a view. So the tpix file that is stored with uh, Match3DX is exactly this blue uh, squares that we can see here and um, the content itself, the point cloud and the true autophoto, they are linked through it so they can be accessed there. In this way here we can access this through the surface area. You go to surface area, you select here the um, processing area that you have defined in Match3DX and then we load the content and then in the background the true auto photos will be loaded and also we can now access the point cloud for each tile. Um, we can zoom in and then the resolution of the true auto photos will on the fly adjust and we can then navigate to a location and load for this area also the point cloud. So in my case if I want to take a look here a closer um, uh, par to this area, then I select here in the surface area the TPIX uh, tile selection uh, and then I drag a box and then this data inside this um, tile will be loaded. We can um, change the colorization of the point cloud. We can here say we want to have it colorized. Um, we can have it here as simplified points. You can open a profile viewer, so you can go here. I will and then click three clicks, one click, second click, then I move away and then the box will be opened up and then I click a third time and then I can take a look at the data in a profile view. If you keep the right mouse button pressed, you can rotate it. If you want, you can also automatically change the height uh, width ratio to one to one. So then the data is more representing a real perspective and we can also shade the data. We can also, in this case, drape it with uh, Z coloring in this top. We can also remove the points and just look at the shading itself. So here you have different viewing options for the whole part. And also if you want, you can grab points, um, selecting a point in this case with the rectangular select. I can here grab an area. I can also here define a polygon and define polygon area what I want to select. Um, with escape you can deselect your selection and if you want to 
take uh, information about points, you can select them and then you can choose uh, a list selected objects part and if you go to the output log then you see for your selection the coordinates of these data here that are available for this part. Let's go back to the main view. I can here each of these views can also be undocked so I can have my profile view as a separate window. Uh, I can dock it back in this case or close it and uh, next part would be uh, also to look at some quality measurements. So these can be found here in the drop down. I can look at the display binary map and then we can see in the binary map here um, how the coverage is given in this area. So typically here the points should then uh, we should not find any points and they will then be reinterpolated afterwards. We can see this also in the distance map. So here in the distance map we see here that um, areas that uh, have no points would then be interpolated. But because we have a lot of overlap here in the central part, we don't see here much. Just here in the upper part we see here no points were measured here and then the distance here was covered by interpolation. The other displays is model counts, so how many models were used. If it's red, there was one single model only existing. If it's yellow, there were two models able to look at this area and everything that is not color coded, there was more than three or more models available to run the point cloud extraction at this part. So if we only have one single model, then also the standard deviation, as we saw in the reliability, should be not so good. And this can be seen in the standard deviation. So these areas here should have the largest potential of mismatching because we don't have enough uh, probability to match it. And so when we go to these areas and we then switch off this display map, then we can look here if this was correctly matched or not. In this case, it's fine. We see, for example, here in these areas here, we have a little bit of, um, of some mismatching because we don't have enough um, image content to look at these parts. And there uh, you can now go and check the data in the true autophoto or also, of course, you can look at the point cloud itself. So we can, instead of looking here at this area, or let's perhaps go into this area when we go into this area around this building and we see here these um, 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 lower weaker areas, then we can look also at the true auto and see now, okay, here there is now some mismatches and then we can open here the profile view for this part. And then we would see now here along the edge of this building how this was measured we can also go here into this area and select the points in the true auto photo. We can see, okay, these are the points we are interested. And then when we go here, we can now see here how they are placed from the matching part. If you have um, a stereo capable computer, that means a, a quad buffered stereo graphic card from NVIDIA, and also a monitor screen which can run 120 hertz and it's a monitor which is NVIDIA 3D vision ready then you can also activate the photos and you go here to photos you select all the photos then you say activate then you see here the display changes then you can select here the best fit stereo you can click into this area and then you would see this area now in stereo where you can now evaluate image with points in uh, stereo and also see how good the points are now matched on the building itself. Okay, so I closed the stereo window. In case you would have multiple uh, projects run in Match3DX, then you can select this one here. You can, in this case here, discard the data and also unload the TPIC structure and then um, each area that you process in Match3DX will be entered here as an additional entry. 
then you would see here multiple entries and then you would select your second um, match 3dx run and then again load the data into the viewer and then you can take a look at the result physically on the hard disk your um, tiff files here are stored as tiff file with a tfw header so this is then for each of these tiles given and of course they can then be used in any third party as uh, auto photos uh, which are very common used in our profession thank you for watching this video tutorial and see you soon goodbye